In this lecture, the first on a series about the upper limb, we're going to look at the surface anatomy and osteology of the entire upper limb. So we're going to look at the surface anatomy of the shoulder, the arm, the forearm and the hand, all of these regions making up the upper limb. And then we're going to move on to the osteology. We'll look at the clavicle, the scapula, the humerus, ulna, radius, the carpal bones, the metacarpals and the phalanges. And in each of these bony structures, we'll look at specific landmarks. And these are important for muscle attachments. We'll then finish by looking at the various movements that are performed by the upper limb, which is a complex part of the appendicular skeleton, enabling a great arrangement, a great range of movements. So if we just look at the general arrangement of the upper limb, then on this slide, we can see we have a nice body plan of both the male here and the female. And on the male, we can see indicated we've got the upper limb. Specifically, we've got the arm region here, which is connected to the trunk by way of the shoulder, which we'll talk more about here. And then connecting the arm to the forearm, we have the elbow joint, which we can see here. And then most distally, furthest away from the main core of the body, we find we have the hand. The hand, remember, connected to the forearm via the wrist joint. On this picture here, we can see a anterior view of the upper limb and we can see more features, more surface features. We can see we have this shoulder region and we can see a region known as the auxilla. This is your armpit and we can see we have the deltoid, this muscular region that covers the shoulder joint, and we'll look at the deltoid muscle in quite some detail as that covers the shoulder joint. We then pass down distally towards the elbow, and between the elbow and the shoulder, we find we have the arm. We can see a groove here that is separating biceps brachii and triceps brachii here, and this we can see a nice little cleft is where you can palpate the brachial Archery. So there are some important surface landmarks here. We can then move on to the elbow joint and we have a prominent bulge on the medial aspect of the elbow joint. This is known as the medial epicondyle and that's important because the ulnar nerve runs alongside this structure and we'll cover these details throughout this lecture series. We then pass distally from the elbow joint and we see the forearm. We can see the anterior region of the forearm. We have a prominent bulge on the lateral surface of the forearm. And this is due to a really important muscle known as brachioradialis. So we can see a bulge here caused by brachioradialis. We can then move distally again and we can see the hand. The hand is connected to the forearm via the wrist joint where the phalanges, where the carpal bones connect to the radius and the ulna to form this wrist joint. And we can see we have the palm of the hand, and then we can see we have the thumb, the index finger, the middle, the ring, and the little finger that make up the digits of the hand. So these are some key surface landmarks we can see on the anterior aspect of the upper limb. If we look at the posterior aspect, then again we can see we have this muscular region here caused by the mass of deltoid muscle. And then we can see the posterior region. We can see some impressions for the various heads of triceps muscle. Again, we can see the medial epicondyle, this time from the posterior view, just as we saw it on the anterior view here. We can see the olecranon, this bony prominence on the posterior surface of the elbow. Once again, if we move into the forearm, we can see we have this posterior aspect here. And again, on the lateral aspect, so running along the same aspect as the thumb, this lateral aspect here, we can see we have brachioradialis. If we pass to the hand, once again, we can see the thumb, index, middle, ring and little fingers again that make up the digits and we can see this dorsum of the hand. Remember the forearm is connected to the hand via the wrist joint and we have two what are known as styloid processes of the radius and the ulna and we'll look at these in detail when we look at the osteology but both these styloid processes of the radius and the ulna, the radius being lateral, the ulna being medial, 
then we can see these bony prominences. And these can be palpated at the wrist joint. So this region that we can see here on the slide is part of the superior appendicular skeleton and it forms the upper limb. The upper limb is important because it has a high level of mobility, a high level of mobility which is given to it by the pectoral girdle which we'll see in a few slides time. It's also characterized by its ability to grasp structures. The hand is a really important structure at the distal end of the upper limb and its ability to manipulate the fingers to hold, to grasp structures. So when you're holding a pencil to write, it's a complex arrangement of movements that allow your fingers to assume this position. It's a key difference from the lower limb. The lower limb doesn't have as much mobility as the upper limb. And also it doesn't have as much function of the feet compared to the hand. So it's a lot easier to pick up structures with your hands than it is with your feet. However, the main benefit of the upper limb being its mobility isn't the same as the lower limb because it doesn't need to be as mobile and the lower limb is important for stability so you don't have a greater range of movement but it's important in being able to make sure your posture is correct being able to support the entire weight of your trunk so there's a battle between the upper limb and the lower limb the upper limb increasing mobility but it's got a high level of instability, instability. So it's more prone to having um, dislocated shoulder joints. There's a whole series of specialized joints in the upper limb. I mentioned one of them, the shoulder joint, and we'll see that in this lecture series. But the elbow joint and various joints most distally are very specialized, allowing for this increased range of movement. As I mentioned also, the axial skeleton is connected to this appendicular skeleton via the pectoral girdle.